What is good, internet? How you doing? Hey, let me come a little closer to you. What's up, guys and gals and everybody in between? My name is Paul the Fit Fit. So we are no longer strangers now, are we? You know, you gotta keep things uh, all level these days. If you would allow me, I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to introduce myself to you, tell you a little bit about my channel and my studio. So I started Legacy Studios in 2017 after I graduated from SAE Institute Nashville. And then last fall, I <clears throat> kickstarted my channel. I began showing you a progression of a gear revamp. And then lately I've been showing you some tutorials within the industry standard for recording software and that is Pro Tools. I'm gonna continue on with that theme. However, I'm gonna change things up a little bit soon. I'm gonna show you a new DAW. If you might remember, that stands for Digital Audio Workstation. I'm gonna show you some of the ins and outs of Apple's logic. I want you to know that I have a deep love for music of all genres. And recently I have had a reignited passion for film, photography, graphics, and all things media. Now, if you've been watching me for some time, you may be asking yourself, hey Paul V, isn't Legacy Studios mostly a music studio in the Nashville area? Why yes, that is primarily what I do here. However, being a creative in today's entrepreneurial climate, I feel like I really want to branch out and start sharing more of my ideas and creativity with you and the world. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I would invite you to go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. It's probably somewhere down about here. It only takes about that amount of time. Cool. So now that you are subscribed, let's get on to today's content. That's where this prop, this personal lock box comes in. I picked this up recently at Guitar Center Nashville when I was shopping with my friend Ashley. I saw it there and an idea came to me. But before I get into things too deeply, I want to let you know that I am not sponsored by Guitar Center, nor am I sponsored by the makers of this fine personal lock box. However, I really wish that I was. How can I make this happen? Any ideas? Let me know in those comments. So allow me to share with you my idea about this box. If you're in the music industry, you may know what this looks like. If you're not, this resembles a road case. What the heck is the purpose of this product? Why would someone want to buy it? Well, this personal lockbox is something that if you have something personal, you don't want anybody else to see it. If there's something that you want to hide from the world, you can lock it up in here throw it somewhere and forget about it. Now, me on the other hand, I have so much stuff in here and so much in here that I wanna share with you and the world. So, let me share with you what's in my personal lockbox. At the moment, absolutely nothing. Well, since it's open, let me show you what we're working with. If you get yourself one of these, you'll see that on this side you have ample space to store your personal belongings. This side you have the same amount of space and on the bottom you have this little mesh compartment. It does come with two keys. I'm not trying to sell you this product, but if you do get one, please don't lose those keys, okay? So my idea is simply this. I am not trying to hide or keep information from you or from anybody or the world, okay? My idea and what I wanna do is actually to share things with you. I wanna share with you industry secrets. I wanna provide you with tech tips. And I wanted to help you take your production game and level and add value from here to take that up to here. Now please keep in mind, this is a process. It is a detail-oriented process and it may take a long time while I unveil, plan, and process these videos for you to watch. So if you would, please just stick with me. I truly appreciate that. The other thing I want to help you accomplish in this content is to unlock your creative production potential. There's something else that I want to help you with and talk to you about. It is getting the most out of your smartphone camera. So are you ready for today's content? I'm about to reveal to you secret number one of many. Here we go, let's get it. Are you excited? I'm ready to show you. Before we do that, let me share with you my new show reel. Here we go. Yo, my 
my name is Paul the Fear. It is time to unveil what's in my personal lockbox secret number one. You guys ready for this? Here it is. You probably can't see this, so let me bring it closer to you. It says, before you book studio time. So today's topic is all about before booking studio time. Take it away, Paul V. For today's topic, we are talking about something that needs to be talked about. So here it is. This is a combination of adulting, prepping, and getting yourself and your band fully prepped for your studio session. Whenever you book your session, if you do it online or you possibly call your studio, this is about a couple things. Time and money. Not just you and your bands, but the studio and your studio engineers that you're working with. This is a super important topic, but I'm going to talk about that a little more later in this episode. Make sure that you and your band are fully prepped for your session. For my guitar players, whether it be acoustic guitar, electric, rhythm, or bass. Slapping the bass. Please make sure to go ahead and change out those strings before you come to your session. Don't do it there on the spot, that's wasting everyone's time. Come prep, do that maybe one to two days beforehand. Give those strings a chance to be worn in just a little bit and get some tone and maybe get a chance to get some attack and get a little bit of usage in there just to make sure that they are ready to be recorded. For my fellow drummers, Make sure to change out your heads. Again, don't do this at the studio when you pull up. Do this a day, maybe two to three days in advance. Play those drums, beat on them, get them worn in just a little bit. Make sure that your drums have been tuned, that they're fully maintenance and they're in good shape to be recorded. Make sure your cymbals are in tip top shape as well. When it comes to your hardware and your gear, make sure if you're bringing a bass drum pedal, score some WD-40 on that before your session because nothing worse than having a perfect take and you got a squeaky bass drum pedal leaking into your recording. Just saying, I've been that guy before, but don't you do that. If you might be bringing a MIDI keyboard or a USB keyboard, make sure that your USB cable is in good and working order. Not a lot of studios are gonna be carrying these on hand. Me, however, I use this keyboard for a lot of MIDI recording, so I have about two or three of these in good working order, just in case I need a backup. That's not always gonna be the case. Vocalists, come prepared, be relaxed. Drink a cup of throat coat before you come. Another tip from me to you for the vocalist, I know you may be the front man, front woman, the person of interest that's leading the band, however you identify these days. Just go in there and do your job. Don't let your ego get ahead of anything. Just be you, go in there, have fun, let go, and get the best recording that you possibly can. So this next discussion is probably one of the more important things to talk about here. This is real life stuff. If you don't change out your guitar strings or tune or change out your drum heads, okay, you can always maybe do that on the spot. That's rather unprofessional, but this one here can make a lasting or possibly break a first impression. And this one is showing up on time and when I say show up on time if you have a 2 p.m. session booked don't show up at 155 with four band members and a 10 piece drum kit yeah no set prior plans to work with your studio to either get there at maybe 1 115 130 be on time be prepped get there early so that way you can get loaded in get your gear set up 
be prepped. Let the engineer set things up, let them get things mic'd, get signal, and so forth. You don't want to be there for a four hour block of time, taking an hour just to get set up. Your nerves are going to be shot, you're going to feel rushed, you're probably not going to get the best overall performance. Plan, prep, be on time. One thing I want to share with you that I've found that works for me really well before I even book an actual session and do any recording is I like to do a consultation at no charge. I do this for a number of reasons. Number one, it lets me as a studio owner, engineer, and producer know where my artist or client actually is in this process. It helps me get an idea where they're at in pre-production. Is their song ready? Do they have an MP3 they're just gonna sing or rap over that? Do they actually need me to add instrumentation, full drums? Do I need to hire out a bass player? Do I need to mix this myself? Do I need to send this out to a mastering engineer? Just things like that. It helps the artist get to know me and my space. They get to know my production workflow. We talk about all these different types of things. Them coming into my space gives them a feel for what it's gonna be like when they actually come to record while they're paying for this project. As I had mentioned earlier in this video, there are some things we needed to talk about. In this part of having that free consultation, this allows you to set expectations. Now, what I mean by that, this is ultimately a business, right? You're in this to be making money. Am I right? I mean, you're not just doing this for free. I mean, while making music is fun, it's exciting, it's exhilarating, the vibes are flowing, connections are happening all kinds of stuff's going on, but you don't want to be volunteering your time. This is when you set those guidelines and rules. No smoking in my studio. I'm not going to provide you alcohol. If you want to do those things, I highly suggest that you do that on your own time. When we're in the room, we're in the room. It's time to grind and work. Let's have fun, but let's do it responsibly and legally. That's just, my viewpoint here, do what you will, do what you want. The other thing about setting expectations is you have someone coming into your space, they are shedding out money, they are putting what's in their mind, their heart and soul, and they are performing that for you. Maybe someone that they don't know very well other than just this consultation. That's not a time for you to put on a game face. It's time for you to be completely 100% real with that client. Something to mention when it comes to talk about expectations. We're musicians, we're all human. Our egos get to us sometimes. It is your job as the engineer, mixer, producer to reel these artists back in. All right guys, going back to expectations. Let's get focused on this. Let's stop bickering, let's stop fighting. All right, you have to wear many hats here. You have to be the person that smooths things out. You have to keep people focused. You have to continuously worry about budgets. You have to say, that was a great take, but you know what? I feel like what you told me, you strive for excellence. I think we can probably get a couple better takes out of this here. Can we try it again, but try it in this way. Little tips like that. You have to be a psychologist. You have to be the janitor. You have to be the everything. You are the one that's running this session, whether you realize it or not. With that being said, other things are going to happen. Bad weather. If you live in Nashville, traffic is horrible all the time. Unless it's like 3.30 in the morning. That's usually when I leave here. Things are pretty good. Word to the wise. If you live in Nashville, never speed through Berry Hill. Just saying, speaking from experience there. Something else that can take place when it comes to recording. You may break a drum head. You may break a guitar string. Uh-oh, technology, power might go out. You may have something go bad with an interface. Maybe one of the monitors stops working. If you have something going on with the computer, the hard drive's not recognizing things. What do you do? 
All right, guys, let's take five. Go outside, get some fresh air. Let me reboot. We'll come back refreshed and we'll reconvene. So these are some little tips from me to you to help run your session smooth from an engineer, producer, someone that's running the session. And that's a couple tips for you as an artist or musician coming in before you actually spend money and time investing in this studio. Just some things to think about. This has been video number one from my personal lock box. It was my goal today to share with you some tips and ideas and things to just generally think about if you're a musician coming into a studio, things to prep for, to get ready for, to work out before you come to your paid session. If you're on the other end of the glass, if you're an engineer or producer pushing that red R button, same thing. Just some tips, things to think about, how to get through some situations and how to coach. If you found today's content valuable, if you like things, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. If you're new here, thanks so much for watching. Go ahead, think about hitting that red subscribe button there. It only takes that amount of time. I appreciate you for watching. If you haven't checked out any of my other previous videos on studio stuff or anything I've done in the past, maybe check out my ProLine adjustable studio speaker stands. If you haven't checked it out, watch it right here. It's my number one video so far to date. All right, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, I truly do. If you forgot my name already, I'm not gonna let you forget. You know who I am. My name is Paul the Fifth.